Okay. Okay. Hello, guys. Uh, if you see me and hear me, please write something in the chat and uh, I'll try to. Uh, we can see. hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Hi, Luigi. Uh, can you turn on your cameras, please? Because I don't see you yet. Hi. Hi, Marsh. Hello. 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 Okay. I. Um, um, I don't see the chat yet, uh, uh, but I'm ready to start. Okay, so today we are going to cover the topic of business modeling, and I also would like to thanks uh, to say thanks to Olga because her topic was very informative, and uh, I was uh, listening not actually carefully, but uh, what I heard was uh, definitely useful for not only businesses, but also for everyday life. So I uh, said uh, thank you to her. It was great. And now let's uh, move on to business modeling. Um, so what should I do to turn another slide? Okay. Um, so, what should I do to launch my project from idea to its realization? Uh, today we are going to discuss uh, this problem and uh, what is needed for the project to be launched successfully but not stuck in the first phase or from the very start. Um, today I will share some practical um, issues and I will share my own uh, experience on this business modeling topic. And uh, I hope this may help you save money and time for your own businesses in the future or even now. Uh, so let me tell you briefly about myself. Uh, my name is Yekaterina Blinova. You probably uh, remember me from that emails uh, and from the opening ceremony. But also I have a very uh, deep experience in uh, management. Uh, so I, uh, among all my diplomas, I have a diploma of specialist in management. I also work as associate professor uh, of investment management in Samara National Research University. And I had been working as a head of um, the uh, city of regional department of touristic company. Its name is Pangea. Uh, so, and uh, my experience is about uh, business modeling in that um, uh, touristic company. When it was uh, open in uh, uh, 2007, we were just ordinary touristic company working as um, a business to uh, clients to consumers model. But uh, the revenues were not as uh, high as we wished to. And we started to make uh, advertisements. It was uh, different ways to advertise our uh, services as booking. Um, it was um, just uh, anything we tried from um, uh, printed uh, journals to uh, TV channels. Uh, but still, the profits were not that high as we wanted to. And uh, we decided to uh, think about our business model and maybe to change it. And um, you know, what we did uh, is uh, the decision that we won't be only B2C business, but also B2B. And uh, the business to business implied um, that we would work with other uh, small touristic companies. Uh, and um, uh, we... Um, promoted ourselves as the booking company. So uh, we uh, booked the tourists of another agencies uh, and we offered a higher percentage uh, for that booking uh, than they could um, receive from the direct work with the touristic operators. And our revenue, our profit was from the small difference in percentage um, which um, the touristic operator gave us and which we um, shared with that small touristic company. So that was the first uh, shift of our business model. And then, uh, you know, the business model is um, um, a set of your hypothesis. So we tried one hypothesis, it was good enough. And then we decided to try another. Uh, another one was uh, to shift to 
franchisee business and we sold our uh, franchise to other companies, touristic companies, and we earned royalties from that. Uh, that was another shift and that was also good and now our company is well known throughout the not only Samara city but also Samara region. Um, uh, you know that Talyati in Samara is also a big uh, city so uh, there are um, several companies working there also uh, but unfortunately I don't want to uh, think about what happened to that tourist business uh, the recent year uh, so uh, that was the good example of the shifting of business models um, so today uh, yeah. hello man sorry for interrupting uh, actually the story that you told right now was is, is really interesting so uh, may I ask you to share uh, your experience if you have in a kind of, I don't know, PDF or PowerPoint that what, what, what you how you change your strategy and how was the impact on your revenue by uh, using some kind of graphs or something like this. That, uh, well, that, that, that you could see how the strategy increased the revenue. You want to get like all the information, like all the details. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know, much um, good. Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Thank you very much. And uh, it's really very interesting to see it in uh, pictures and graphs, so the uh, difference, the uh, movement of the revenue. Yeah, I, I'll try to draw something um, after the class. Yeah, thank you. And uh, uh, thank you um, for interrupting me uh, because I forgot to, to um, ask you to write all your questions. Don't hesitate to do it in the chat uh, so that I can read them and answer um, maybe during the lecture or after it, okay? okay Don't hesitate to write it, okay? So let's discuss today uh, these uh, topics that are on the slide. So what is the business model and its purpose? Uh, then I will show you the Alexander Osterwalder's business model canvas. Uh, then I will uh, tell you about the examples of business models and also we'll see the transformation of business models uh, during the last year. And um, uh, within these contents, uh, you will also have the task to brainstorm your own uh, canvas, uh, but I will talk about it a little bit later. Uh, so, um, uh, what is the business model? Um, the first question to you is, uh, if you have any experience in uh, uh, launching your startups or any business, uh, and um, have you ever uh, read or, uh, on book, in books or on um, internet uh, anything about um, business modeling? Please write in the chat. And um, uh, so, uh, what is the business model? Uh, this is um, maybe the next step from idea. Uh, and uh, this is a set of assumptions or hypotheses that are needed to um, be sold uh, and bought by customers. And um, um, when you have an idea, then you need to work on your business model uh, and you need to understand what the revenue will be and uh, how you will get uh, the profit from this business model. And um, so this is a set of your hypotheses and that's why you will need to try them. Um, according to management guru, Peter Drucker, uh, you can see here that a business model is supposed to answer who your customer is what value you can create or add to the cu customer and how you can do that at reasonable costs. So Peter Drucker was the um, economist who actually didn't use that definition. Uh, he, he didn't use uh, that uh, words, business model, but the definition was given by him and it is used uh, uh, widely now. Um, so this is um, some kind of uh, theoretical part. Uh, very often business models are being confused with uh, business plans, though they have huge differences. Uh, and most of them you can see here on this slide. Um, so if there is an existing business 
um, on the on market and you want uh, to get a share of that market with your new uh, your own project product or services and um, in this case you can find some information uh, about the approximate costs and revenues uh, and that will let you uh, build your business plan but uh, if uh, uh, you have uh, a brand new product, it has no analogs on uh, market, then uh, it is impossible um, to draw a business plan during the launch period uh, because the accuracy of your planning will be very low. And uh, um, at the start of the launching of your business, you uh, personally may lack many information or some information. Uh, that is uh, the time for business modeling only. Um, so, um, uh, to start uh, your business modeling, you can use this canvas uh, proposed by Alexander Rostovaldo. Uh, it um, lets you look at all nine building blocks of your business on one page, as you can see here. And um, I hope that it looks familiar to you, because yesterday you had a class on uh, design thinking lab with Svetlana Tatarinova, and uh, she proposed uh, you to think about the canvas, but not the business model canvas, but lean canvas. Um, yeah, I will talk about it uh, later in the end of this lecture, but I hope that this canvas looks familiar to you now. Um, so each of these nine components, they contain a series of hypotheses about your business model that you need to test. Uh, it is an organized way uh, to lay out your assumptions about not only the key resources and key activities, but also think about your value propositions, it's in the center of this slide, customer relationships, channels, customer segments, revenue streams, and cost structure. Uh, you can see uh, them all on one um, page and uh, you can see if you've missed anything important and you can compare this model to other models, yours or of your uh, other businesses. Uh, and I want to um, draw more attention to only two uh, segments. Uh, first of all, it's uh, the customer segments. Uh, I, I mean the parts of this uh, canvas. So uh, to choose the right business model, the first and the foremost element to be kept in mind is the customer or consumer. Uh, uh, rather than selecting a business model which is profitable and best according to your notion, uh, please choose one that adds value to your customer by keeping in mind their needs and understanding how they buy. Uh, that is the secret of um, success, actually. And you should ask um, several questions before, before selecting the business model of your startup. Uh, first of all, who is my customer? Uh, you should uh, um, segment him uh, by um, um, maybe demography, geography, behavior. Then uh, you should um, uh, answer the question, what is his uh, buying pattern? Uh, then what is the problem your product is going to solve to him? And how can I uh, design my revenues uh, that I will get from offering him something? Uh, and uh, the second, um, I think most uh, important uh, um, segment of this canvas is the value proposition. You can also see here um, maybe um, uh, it is uh, small letters, but I hope that all is readable. Uh, so the value proposition is the promise of tangible benefits, which is a customer will receive from consuming or experiencing uh, your offer. And the value proposition has basic idea of how you are um, solving the problem of the customers. Um, for example, the companies like um, Airbnb, maybe you have tried it. Uh, it solves the problem of uh, its customers by um, by, by uh, selling uh, or letting uh, for rent the customers unused property. Uh, 
Um, Google makes uh, the usage of internet uh, and the search systems easy uh, by providing their algorithm. Um, okay, so your business uh, model should say how the customer will benefit from your offering while benefiting you in terms of profit. So it must be uh, the two sides in the uh, benefit side. Uh, okay, um, uh, what, I, uh, what I mean, um, for example, when uh, I came here by a taxi, it was a Yandex taxi, but I also often use Uber, for example. Uh, I don't pay to Uber, I don't pay to uh, this uh, service because I pay to the driver, but driver, pays to the services from where they received uh, the, uh, the order. Uh, so they, they pay um, from their profit to um, the service of Uber, for example. So Uber uh, has uh, thought about my problem, my, um, my needs, my pains, and uh, they decided not to charge me. Uh, so thanks uh, them for that. Uh, that is uh, the point. Uh, and uh, um, all these um, segments of, of this uh, uh, canvas are very important for your business model. And um, uh, now I would like to share um, one case. Uh, it's a case of um, Nespresso. Uh, it's a fully owned uh, company by Nestle company. Uh, and uh, it's a great example of a powerful business model. Um, it changed the face of coffee business all over the world. Uh, it turned uh, um, uh, transactional business, uh, I mean, selling coffee through retail into one with uh, recurring revenues when they start to sell uh, proprietary reports uh, through direct channels. And uh, here is uh, what their strategy uh, looked like on the canvas. And I uh, propose to listen to Alexander Osterwalder himself. And now I would um, um, uh, turn on uh, the demonstration from YouTube. Uh, one second. My name is Alex Osterwalder. I'm the lead author of Business Model Generation and co-founder of Strategizer.com. I'm going to walk you through the business model of Nespresso, a company that sells coffee in the espresso business. So let's look at the value proposition first. It's composed of two products, the Nespresso machine and the pods that go with it. And we're going to look at the distribution strategy that Nespresso has. They sell the machines through retail to households which means they earn a one-time transactional sales from selling the machines. Most of that money goes to the key partners, the machine manufacturers, who they work together with. Then for the Nespresso pods, they have a totally different distribution strategy. They only sell the pods through their own channels. Started out with mail order and call center, then they built Nespresso.com, and today in the biggest cities of the world, you'll find Nespresso stores as well. This is interesting because it meant that they had to build distribution channels as a key resource in their business model because this is the first time that a Nestle-owned company sells directly to households. Now, why do they use different distribution channels for the machines and the pods? Well, they use retail because it has the broadest reach possible because they want to get the machines into your household. Once you have it in your house, you're actually locked in because you can only use Nespresso pods that's so-called switching costs, which prevent you from going to another machine manufacturer. And they defend that through the patents that they have in the key resources. And some of those patents actually expired last year, which means they need to renew their business model to a certain extent. Now, once you have the machine and you're locked in, you're going to have to buy pods from Nespresso, which means they earn money from repetitive pod sales. They create so-called recurring revenues. They change an entire industry 
from moving it from a transactional business to a repetitive business with recurring revenues. So interestingly here, they have recurring revenues, they have direct sales with higher margins, and they ask you for five to six times more for the coffee that you pay. So they get people around the world to pay much more money for the same amount of coffee. Now let's look at the left-hand side of the business model canvas to see what they need to have to do what they plan to do on the right-hand side. First of all, they need coffee. So they work together with coffee growers and they try to source some of the best coffee in the world, which they put in the pods. And the pods is something that they manufacture themselves. So production of the pods is an important key activity and they have production facilities to do that. They churn out 12 billion pods every year, which is one of their main costs. Another important activity and key resource and main cost is marketing and branding. Obviously, when you're in consumer goods, you need to put a lot of money into that. And the last piece here that's interesting is that because they sell directly to households, a decision made on the right-hand side of the canvas, they had to build up business-to-consumer distribution logistics, which we find on the left-hand side of the canvas. So now we have everything that's important for the success of Nespresso on one piece of paper. And interestingly, when Nespresso started out, they had a totally different business model around the exactly the same product, and that almost went bankrupt. So it's only after a couple of iterations of the business model that they were able to find the business model that you see on this piece of paper and that led to a multi-billion dollar business. So the difference was not the product alone. The difference were all the pieces here on the business model canvas that led to the success of Nespresso. Okay, thank you, Alexander. Um, I will get back to my screen. Um, Okay. okay, thank you. Um, um, so guys, do you see my presentation? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Uh, wait a second, I need to fix it a little bit. Uh, because you see my presentation, but I don't and I can't skip the files. I'm sorry. Oh, one second. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so thanks for watching that video. And um, uh, and now I would like you to brainstorm your own uh, business model canvas. Um, I can now send you uh, by email, uh, and you also can use your pen and paper. And uh, the most um, welcome way is to use the mirror. Uh, to brainstorm your own canvas. You will have uh, uh, 10, from eight to 10 minutes to think about at least first three blocks. Let me send you, maybe uh, you will use my email information. So now you can check your emails and um, 
Guys, do you hear me? Are you here? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma please go on. Okay, okay thanks, God. Uh, so, um, uh, you should uh, um, fill in these blocks, um, at least six of them, please. So, the first is the value proposition, then it goes customer segments, channels, revenue streams, key partners, and key resources. So, please uh, uh, think about these six blocks now for 10 minutes. If you have any questions during your work, you can ask me. And um, after 10 or maybe eight minutes, we will get back to uh, discuss it. Maybe um, we will um, look at one or two business model canvas of yours. So uh, good luck. If you have any questions, uh, please ask. But actually, I do believe that uh, you have already thought about that blocks yesterday because your home task was something like that. And um, uh, what will be next to do is um, to fill in uh, that lean canvas with uh, Svetlana. And uh, that will be half of the work if you fill uh, this canvas now. Uh, actually, yeah, much good. actually, yes, yes, we were two teams, okay? okay. So, so that, that was that we were working on our project. project. Would you mind, Would you mind also splitting us in two teams, teams to continue, continue with our teammates? Uh, whom, whom do you wish to share the team? Uh, uh, me, me, Luigi, Luigi and Ananda. Ananda. Um, so you have uh, one project uh, for three people? Yes. 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 Well, okay, yeah, sure then. Thank you. Okay. Uh, guys, I hope that you have found uh, the canvas in Miro. Uh, it is uh, called uh, the business model. It's uh, to uh, the right. Just use uh, any table which is uh, free now and uh, fill in. So, are we going to join the, the, the call with Mashud and Ananda or what? Um, so that will be one, uh, yeah, you can um, uh, discuss with them or maybe you will brainstorm. You just, uh, all of you write your ideas uh, and uh, then you can- Because we need to break the room, right? So. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, let's uh, uh, make the session room for you, Jan. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so um, I'll kindly ask uh, Luigi and Ananda to contribute uh, for filling uh, the uh, business uh, model canvas uh, and Hello. Hello, hello. Nanda. Nando. Yes. Okay. Uh, can you see my screen? I can see perfectly. Okay. So we should, if I believe correctly, we should fill in this one, right? Yeah, but she sent you an email like on your direct email. Oh. Wait a minute. Ah, this one. Exactly the same. Okay. So, okay. Is, where is my shoe? Where is my shoe? Uh, is it is is he in the in this room? No, I don't see him. I cannot see him. And let me send him a message. Okay. Okay, I think I think he fills in another another canvas. Okay, so is 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 available in our room now. Ah, okay. So Mashud, are you are you with us? Hello, Mashid. So we can start to feel the canvas, eh? So we can start to feel like you know the point number one. Okay. But I so, would prefer actually like maybe like you can we can work directly on the on the word that she sent, you know, like on the email address. No. I think I only got this one email. But you see the attachment? Yeah. Okay. Oh, this one. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. That's what I what what I thought. Okay. So they said, you know, like to work on point number one, two, or three, right? On the yes. business idea. So point number one is about value proposition. What value do we deliver to the customer? Uh, okay. Uh, which one of our customer problem are we helping to solve? So the point is, in, in which idea do we apply this? So that's... Uh uh our product is about the uh zoom zoom device right yeah yes okay so the value proposition i mean what value do we deliver to the customer keeping people more connected yeah that i think that is exactly our goal 
Okay, so this is a value proposition. Customer more connected, okay. More connected, I would say. More, okay. Oh, oh no. Okay, you're gonna present. <laughs> 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 bye bye take care <laughs> this this breakout room always so quick yeah i forgot the second box that we should fill this, in this Is it? How are you? How was it? Uh, is anyone here? Um, I see only much hood, so all others are in the session, so they, I guess they don't he hear me. Oh. Yes, ma'am, I can hear okay. you. Okay, great. Welcome back. Welcome back, friends. Okay, so how was the work? Did you feel how many blocks did you feel? You can um, write in the chat. Please write in the chat how many blocks you have filled in. Um, Lada, I don't see the chat. Can you please? Um, okay, uh, while you are writing, so uh, I guess that I'm waiting for answers. So. Um, uh, answers from uh, Chaliza, from Sabine, from Nico, and from uh, the team of Mashhud, uh, Ananda, and Luigi. Yeah, right? Dear friends, are you here? Uh, dear friends, if you hear me, please say we something. Can, we can hear you. We can hear you. Hey, yeah, yeah. Yes, what is it? Okay, thanks, God. Uh, zero boxes, our team has been disconnected. Much um, good. Yeah, I saw that you uh, went out of that um, room, unfortunately. Luigi, Ananda, um, did you fill in any blocks? Yeah, now that actually we feel only two boxes, but really shortly, so. Yeah, I understand that uh, we are very short uh, in time because of um, um, that lack of time today. Uh, I don't know what happened uh, um, technically, but uh, also the previous speaker before me was, uh, um, took a little more time than she planned. That's why we are short of time now, but nevertheless, please um, think about this canvas and uh, I would like you to send it, uh, to fill it in uh, Miro and I will see it. Please do it by the 20th of um, uh, January, maybe by, um, by uh, uh, 8th, because 18th, because uh, on the Monday you will have a session with Svetlana and you will go on discussing lean canvas which is corresponding to business model canvas so please fill it in before the monday okay and okay. i will check it in miro and give you some feedback okay um and um, the next part of our lecture is um, uh, examples of business models and here on this slide you can see i call them classical business models because it's the classical way of um, you know, doing business. First of all, it's manufacturer. You can see the logos of General Electric, Ford, and also it's in uh, Cyrillic Ercatse uh, progress. It's uh, the logo of our Samara regional um, great 
uh, plant which produces uh, engines for rockets. As you might probably know uh, that Samara is uh, called the space capital of Russia and um, it is called uh, like that for many reasons and one of that reasons, the major reason, is uh, thanks to that plant, uh, that factory uh, uh, progress which produces engines. So who is a manufacturer? He makes finished products uh, from raw materials. Uh, it may sell directly uh, to uh, the um, uh, customer or uh, it can sell to a middleman, uh, for example, uh, another um, sale agency, a sale uh, or shop to sell to the final customer. Uh, also, you can see here the distributor. Uh, the distributor buys um, the final um, results of uh, the manufacturer and resell them um, uh, uh, to public. Uh, for example, it's uh, any uh, automobile dealership, and uh, here you can see the pictures of um, the automobile salons. Uh, another type of uh, business model is a franchise. Uh, you can see that uh, all McDonald's and Pizza Hut's throughout the world, they work as franchise. I also put here the logo of Pangea, that was the name of our Earth because before all the continents spread out to smaller pieces as we know them now. Uh, so this is the logo of my touristic company. Uh, we also work, use this business model. Uh, also, you can see the logos of high touch and low touch companies. High touch company, they involve um, uh, the work of um, uh, your uh, of their employees, and uh, it requires a lot of human interaction. Uh, for example, haircut salons. And low touch companies, they uh, are opposite to high touch. They use um, um, they reduce human interaction and uh, uh, try to improve their technology. Uh, for example, IKEA or Walmart. Uh, also, uh, there are retailers. Uh, they sell directly to public after purchasing the products from a distributor or wholesaler. And for example is Amazon company. Uh, also, we can see uh, examples of business models like crowdsourcing. Um, it involves the users to contribute to value provided. Uh, for example, Wikipedia, you can contribute. Uh, YouTube, you contribute your videos there. Uh, another example is Brick and Mortal. It's the ordinary model of a business where retailers uh, and manufacturers deal with the uh, consumers face to face. Uh, E-commerce uh, is when uh, your uh, proposal is um, only uh, on internet. And the mixture of them is called the bricks and clicks. Um, another type of business models is freemium. It's the most um, um, often, it's the most common uh, business model now uh, on the internet. Uh, the companies offer basic services to the customers for free while charging uh, your premium account. Um, for example, it happens to um, Zoom, uh, first 40 minutes are for free. And if uh, you need more, like we, we have bought the um, uh, premium account and uh, we are now free to use more than 40 minutes. Um, also, there is a subscription model like Netflix or Dollar, and, uh, Dollar Shave Club when you buy the subscription. Um, many uh, social media work uh, on advertisement business model like Facebook, Instagram, when uh, you see, you need to see um, uh, their advertisement uh, and use uh, the services. Uh, also, uh, there is a business model called Razor and Blades uh, it uh, uses um, the scheme uh, when uh, you buy something um, not cheap, uh, but uh, in a uh, uh, companion, you need to buy uh, products. Uh, it's like Nespresso and it's pots. It's like Gillette, it's like uh, um, ink and um, 
uh, printers. Um, uh, here is my example of, um, of the real life of business modeling. In real life, there is not one company that uses only one uh, business model. There is always a mixture. And this is one of the favorite games of my daughter. She um, uh, always- Katerina, uh, sorry, I worked before for HP. What? I did work for HP before. Oh, really? Uh, back so, to his life, yeah. So okay. you worked for Razor and Blades uh, business model. <laughs> Great. Um, uh, okay, so here we can uh, see that um, this talking ban uh, game uh, uses uh, freemium and advertisement business models because uh, my daughter can play uh, it for free, but when she tries to mix um, that bo bottles uh, and make the chemistry um, uh, experiments. Uh, she can use only seven bottles per day. If she needs to use more bottles, then I need to pay. And also there is advertisements, but in this application, there are advertisements of another games like Talking Cat Angela. Um, also another uh, uh, example is uh, another play, uh, another game, uh, it's in Russian, it's, it's called uh, Words from Words, and uh, among freemium and advertisement business model, it also uses crowdsourcing, because I can suggest new words that I can uh, find out of the bigger word, and I send it to tech support, and they consider my um, proposal of the new word for them. Um, and now there is a huge and great transformation of businesses for the last year. Um, due to pandemic, clients disappeared from taxes. For example, at the same time, the need to, to pass something to friends and relatives appeared. And also e-commerce became popular and e-shops encountered the need of couriers. And taxi companies shifted their business into courier and delivery business along with taxi. And also they got into partnership with aggregators. Um, as a result, number of clients was recovered. And now when the life starts to get back, these companies have a wider business sphere and higher revenue now. Uh, there are also examples uh, in uh, clothes industry, uh, in, um, uh, in other ways of um, um, music industry and so on, but uh, because of the lack of time, I need to skip it. And um, uh, now I would like to uh, discuss with you um, the transformation um, and um, uh, the crises. So uh, all uh, the years, uh, the crises happen each several years. And um, it is normal because we live in an economy which is cyclical. And uh, each crisis gives uh, a great kick to some companies to become the world famous and profitable. And here are my examples. Yeah, you can see them below this graph. Uh, and now uh, there are also new companies that are becoming very popular, like Zoom. I have placed it also in by, uh, under 2020 um, time. And uh, this is a, a real opportunity also for you. What can you bring to a consumer? What can you earn money from now? And uh, I really believe that uh, if you uh, don't give up, uh, you think it over, um, I do believe that you can do it. Um, and um, uh, for, uh, before we end the lecture, I would like to uh, talk about the link canvas. Uh, it was designed by Ash Maurya, and uh, it's a single also page business plan template. It helps you to break down your idea into basic assumptions to make it more readable and easily editable. And it has been adapted from the Alex uh, Osterwalder's business model canvas. So it is the next step of your business modeling. Uh, so please uh, do your homework. Um, uh, I will give you feedback on it. And uh, then you will uh, work uh, on some blocks that you will already um, do. 
uh, you will just transform them to the link canvas with Svetlana Tatarinova. Okay, guys, thank you very much for today. Um, I am really excited to deliver you this uh, topic. I hope you also. I wish you a great, great um, entertainment part, which is going to start now. Uh, so this is my goodbye for today. Bye bye. Thanks for Thanks your valuable presentation. presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Thank you.